Hi everyone, welcome back to part two. Uh, for part two of the video, we're going to start by putting on some, whoops, I'm having an accident here, i got all sorts of stuff going on here. We're going to be using <clears throat> some acrylic ground for pastel, use any brand that you can find. Um, and we're just going to put a thin layer over the bear. And uh, I'm just going to take a, probably about a one inch brush. Actually, i got a bigger one here that I can use. This one is, uh, I don't know, looks like about an inch and a half. <clears throat> and my ground is starting to dry out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little bit here and there, and then I'm going to add some water to it just to spread it around to get it on here good. Um, I really want it to be thin, though, because I don't want to cover up this this bear too much, you know. Um, I want it to show through. And if you get this on too thickly, it... Uh, It stays too opaque, I think. So I'm just going to smear it around here. And I'm just winging it out here so that I can put pastel on these areas as well. Now hopefully this will dry clear. Just want enough ground to give this a little bit of tooth, so don't put it on too heavy. I used very little on my brush, and it was all I needed for the whole for the whole piece. But then again, mine was kind of dry. So now this can take a while to dry. Um, just let it sit. You can even let it sit overnight before going on to the next portion of the video. Okay, so now I have the um, the pastel ground on here, and it's a little bit sandy. And what I'm going to do is uh, begin by taking some pastels. I'm going to, just using my new pastels at the moment. Um, I've got a clear space for myself. I've got such a mess here. And I'm going to take out some blues, blacks, browns, grays, those kinds of things. Um, with this deep blue will be very pretty, I think. It almost looks like a, um, a um, phthalo blue or Prussian blue or something like that. That's a really cool color. So I'm going to use that one. And um, I'm going to be using also white charcoal pencil, black charcoal. Um, I do have a black carbon pencil. If you have black carbon, that'll work too. Black carbon is actually a little bit harder and gives you finer lines than charcoal will, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to pull out some different blues here. There's one that has never been used. Wow. Never used this color. Let's see what it's like. Oh, that's a nice color. I'm just going to break off a little hunk of that. Don't need the whole pastel for that. Um, and then I need a little bit lighter blue yet. I'm going to put some um, like long marks here just to get some black going in this. Um, in fact, I might just look, I might just pull out my pan pastel and use some of that black to get me started over on the right hand side. So with my pan pastels, what I'll do, if you have a set of grays like this, um, they're either called the gray set or um, soot is another word that they call for this set. This set has seven, seven colors. That's their full gray set. They make another one that is five colors. But right now, I'm just going to go with this very black black. And I'm dabbing a couple times on my sponge, and I'm just going to lay this in here. I want that blue to show through still, but this is so black off to the side uh, that I want to I wanna get that all in there. I'll just spread this all around. I've got some coming off on the side. Try not to blow your pastel. Blowing pastel is not a safe thing to do. Um, 
any pastelist will tell you that you shouldn't do that. When I'm usually painting in pastel, I work upright so that all the pastel will drop from the painting. For this, I'm not doing it. And what I do is on my easel, I put, I make a little tin foil trough and I tape it to my easel so that um, where the painting sits, it's taped to that portion of the easel and it'll um, catch all of the dust. And then when I'm done, I just throw it away, which is great. Now around the ears, they're very, very black. So I'm just going to put this in really smoothly here. There's, this is just the first layer. There's going to be many, many layers to come. So, same with this ear over on the left. Very, very dark. So just rub it all on there. And if you have dust that you need to settle off, just go like this and give it a tap. That way it's not going to blow into your room because you don't want to be breathing that stuff. That's just not good to be breathing that. You can even use your pan pastel to get texture as well um, with your sponges, with your um, soft tools, the, the knife that comes with these. There's little square sponges, and then there's these little oval ones. The square ones are really nice. I've got some square ones somewhere. I just got to pull them out. And once it's pushed on all the way, don't over push it because you don't want to poke holes through. But I'm just going to get something on, on the edge here, and then I can just put some furry marks in this way with pan pastel, too, if I want to do that. Um... But I prefer to use charcoal for this because I can get a lot more down. But you can also do this, which I'm going to do here to give um, some texture for this area. It helps to cover it a lot quicker. And you don't want to go in the same direction all the time, but you want to get the fur flowing in the right way. Don't make it too uniform is what I'm trying to say. And then once we get this layer down, it can go ahead and um, start putting lines on with blues and blacks and everything else. So this kind of gave it a furry texture already. So we're getting there. You can see it changing. I'll do this here. And let's see, up here at the top, it gets a little bit darker black. So I'm just going to put this up here. I don't know if I'm in frame or not. Got to make sure I'm in frame. I'm sorry. It's a little bit bigger. My camera might be a little bit too close. Now I'm just using what's left on my, my little knife here. And I'm using that to make my hash marks for fur. Make sure it's not too even. And I'm just using up what's left on there and bringing it down in a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, you see it's starting to come together a little bit. Now what, I, what I'm going to do here also is grab my pastel pencils and we'll start the eyes. I think putting the eyes in helps to bring it to life and bringing it to life makes it a little more exciting. So let me grab my pastel pencils here. These are my Derwent pencils. Um, they come with, I'm not sure how many come in this box. If it's 50, I'm going to grab my white charcoal pencil, which I'm going to use just very briefly. I'm also going to grab some of my blues that I think will be useful. And it's hard to tell with these blues which ones will be good and which ones won't. I think my light blue and this um, Prussian blue will be good. I also want to grab my ultramarine blue. 
um, there's cerulean. I'm not sure if I need cerulean, but uh, ultramarine for sure. And I'm going to stick with those for right now. We'll see how far we get. And I also need to grab a black charcoal, which is right here. This is a 6B, which is nice and soft. Um, I like the soft charcoal because it, um, it puts out such a dark line so easily with such a soft touch. You can get a great variety of lines. You can put in the little areas of fur up here. Or the sharpness that you need. And the fur on a bear is just so fine. So I'm just going to keep going at this all along here. And I may be adding some blues in. I can take my other pastel. Actually, I'm going to take my black pastel to get some bigger lines in. Like this. And then, for fun, I might add in a little bit of blue here and there, just to make it more whimsical. Maybe a little bit of light hitting the top of the coat, and then a little bit dark Prussian blue in a different area, like this. And then put some black over it. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up, and then I will show you how I whimsy up my my fur. I've chosen um, a few colors. His eyes are actually brown, but they've got a little bit of an amber color to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this color which is not either one. And I'm just going to put this in here. It looks very red right now, but it's okay. And the same with this one. And I'm just going to blend that a little bit with a blender. You can use a brush, paint brush will work, but this is just what I have handy. So I'm just blending this in. And then I'm gonna go over it with the amber in the bottom where I see the amber in his eyes, right here. Okay, so continuing on, I just took the um, black, and the black pastel, and I'm just kind of beating in some of this texture to soften it a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to go over it some more. It's going to require some layering. But the bear, you know, a bear is so soft looking. They just look so, their fur always looks so shiny and soft. Um, <laughs> when you're close up to it, you notice that. Um, I know that, as so you said that that story freaked you out. I'm sorry if I freaked anybody out. Um, I've had other ones where, like, I was picnicking at Yellowstone <clears throat> with my family, and we kept hearing some tearing sounds, and uh, <laughs> it was... A grizzly bear ripping a log apart to get to some termites or bees or something. And, uh, anyway, yeah, pretty funny. But we, we just finished our lunch. He was about 50 yards away, but he wasn't bugging us. He knew we were there. We left him alone. He left us alone. And they're really not aggressive unless they're threatened. So we didn't threaten them. <laughs> But anyhow, I've seen a lot of bears, and then I've gone to this ice cream place up north in the Upper Peninsula, the UP of Michigan, excuse me, and uh, while we've been up there, we went to this ice cream place, and they feed the bears there, 
they put up a fence like a uh, a uh, baseball diamond would have, you know, real high fence. And on the side, one side, it's a little bit lower. But um, the bears came out. And there were cubs that were all standing up and being aggressive. But the large ones, one of them came right up to the door. And he was, like, pushing on the door because he wanted to get inside. So the guy that ran the ice cream place came out with a baseball bat that he kept by the door because of the bears. <laughs> and he had a big CO2 tank sitting outside, probably empty. And he came, he opened the door up. The bear backed up for him like he was going to let a dog in the house or something. And then he took that baseball bat and he just started banging on the CO2 tank. And the bear jumped up and then turned around and ran away. And I thought, oh, wow. And I was only about four feet away from that one but I had a fence between us so I wasn't concerned about it but it was really wild to see them acting a little more aggressively because I've never witnessed that you know and maybe it was divine intervention my situation with the uh with the bear that I was very close to <laughs> but um yeah I uh I don't know this black just doesn't seem to be showing up as well, but I like the softness it's giving, so I'm going over this black pastel, and I'm just giving some jaggedness to the edge of the fur. This takes a lot of time, so I'm just going to continue to do this, and then I'm going to work my way into the face. You might want to work all around, really. I mean, you could... Um, these eyes aren't finished, so I'm going to do that. There's a lot of black around the eyes. Um, i got to put the pupil in. Actually, finishing the eyes up might be a great idea. I'll do that right now. i just got to pull the photo up because I don't have it up. I've really enlarged the eyes here so that I can see what's going on. And it's very black right here around the eyes. He's got this fur that goes up. Like that, just like an eyebrow. It wraps up around here, around this brown area, and a little bit through it, and then it comes down. And he's got really light fur here. And there's a little bit of pink. Let me find the pink here. Right on the inside of the eye. It's almost a brownish pink, so I'm going to put some brown over that. Um, <clears throat> a light brown. There we go. That makes it more natural. And then the pupil is almost pinpoint. And it's just looking a little bit to this direction. So it's not quite centered. And there's white above it, a lot of reflection. So. I want some of that redness to show. I think it gives it a cool color, but I don't want it to be too red. Okay, and now, where's my white? This goes right here. This one comes right over here. I don't know that it's really white, but it's reflecting that way. Oops, I blew. I shouldn't have done that. That's not good. And then up here, it's just... Like that. It's like zigzagged. And that's almost a blue color as well, but... No, 
I'll grab this. I'm going to continue on working around this eye here. So you can start to see it coming to life. So that's all you need to do. And you can also see some of the blue through here, but I don't want it to show because this is very black here. So I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. Just blend it. And I want the blue to show here, but I want it to be kind of blended in. I think I need to go a little lighter. So it looks like it's reflecting. Okay, so just continue on, put your eyes in and um, work on your colors and if you make a mistake just erase it with a blending tool or something and um, then just keep working at it. I'm going to speed this up and we'll meet back.